Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday at Paradise Valley United Methodist Church. This is Labor Day weekend, and we know that a lot of folks went out of town. Also, Paradise Valley has their family camp going on at Mingus Mountain, so a lot of our folks are there as well. But we are glad that you are here with us and that you have come to rub shoulders, talk with each other, sing together, praise God together, and be in this space together. So thank you for being here today. My name is Pastor Dottie. Pastor Lauren will be preaching today. Pastor Christopher is up at Mingus Mountain. And we welcome you. For those of you who are joining us online, thank you for being present with us wherever you are in the world. And we hope this experience will be beneficial to you as well as, well, as we seek to make God the center of our lives. Well, this week I was thinking about how much we need to worship God together and how hard it is when we can't get together. So I know there's people in our congregation who still really need to be home for a variety of reasons and worship with us online. And I pray that they feel surrounded by us as well. But I want you to know that the gathering of the saints is one of our old, old traditions. And so whoever gets to come during this difficult period of time in our history, we are so glad that you're here. We pray for you every day. Our pastors pray for you, and we continue to lift you up. So now, now that you're here, let us worship God.
please rise for the call to worship. Every generous act of giving is a tribute to God's love for us. Be ready to listen and slow to anger. Keep your hearts and spirits ready to serve the Lord. Technical difficulties. Hey, there we go. Thank you for letting me know you couldn't hear me. <laughs> Let's pray together. <laughs> Creator God, we glimpse your beauty in setting sun, mountain top, eagle's wing. We sense your power in thunder crash, lightning flash, and ocean's roar. Creator God, we praise you. Precious Jesus, we see your love stretched out upon a cruel cross. We stand in awe at your sacrifice. Pure love poured out for humankind. Precious Jesus, we praise you. Holy Spirit, we see your power in lives transformed, hearts on fire. We listen for your still, small voice, comforting, guiding, calling. Holy Spirit, we praise you. From the moment we awake to face the day ahead, you are with us. Through good times and bad, your presence enough for our needs. Every day we will praise you and extol your name forever. Amen. Oh, 
What though the tempest loudly roars, I know my Savior liveth, although the darkness binds me close. Deep in the night sweet songs he giveth, his Fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing, since love is Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep? So now is the time for a children's moment, but I see one child. Are you willing to come up here? And, uh, no, okay. It's all right. I'm scared, too. <laughs> is that at, at the end of the service, I will, oh, now I see two. Do the two guys want to come up for a children's moment? I got something for you. Come on. You can bring your parents. Oh, there's more. Okay, fabulous. Fabulous. Okay, come sit down. Whoops. Hey, I need my mask. Thank you. Look at all of you. Can I sit in the middle of you right here? Thank you. So, today Pastor Lauren is going to talk about giving. Does anybody know what giving is? What is it? Sharing. Sharing. That's right. It's when you don't keep everything to yourself, but you give it away to somebody else. So what happens if you give something away and then you don't have it anymore? How do you feel? Sad. Sad. Good because you help someone. So even though you might give everything away, you might be sad for a minute, but then you like feel really good because somebody else is better off. So I brought something for you to help us remember that Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. So that means the more we give, the better we are off. So these are stickers from our vacation Bible time. There's two of them. And they, we studied knights and castles. There's two. Okay. One, two. 
Okay, I want you to put one of them on you. Okay, here's some. These are dinosaurs. Can you take it? Dra you want a dragon too? There you go. Switch with me. Okay. Come, come grab. What? Uh, well, why don't you take it first, and then you can. I'll tell you what you can do with it. Okay. Okay. If you want to put one on, you don't have to put one on somewhere on you. Let me get one for me. Mine says the Knight's Castle. And there we go. Okay. And then we might have another one here for me. Okay. Now we're all out of them. There's no more. Except this one. Okay. We're going to say a prayer. After we say a prayer, I want you to take your extra one and go give it to somebody out there. And put it on them. Okay. And say, when you put it on them, say, this is for you because you matter. Okay? So I'm going to give my extra one to you so you have an extra one, Jace, to pass out to other people. So when we pray, if you could s repeat the words after me, and the adults out there can help us pray. You're going to give it to your mom? Okay, let's pray first, then you're going to give it to your mom. <laughs> Dear God, thank you for giving us your love. And help us to love others every day by giving them your love too. And all God's children said, Amen. All right, you can go back and. This is the fun part, watching who they give it to. <laughs> All right, let's pray the prayer of confession. Gracious God, you shower us with so many blessings, yet we struggle to share them with others. You love a cheerful giver, but we sometimes give grudgingly. We forget that all we have is yours and that you can use our gifts to bless the whole world. Give us generous hearts which long to share our bounty, giving extravagantly, loving at great risk, and working for justice in seemingly impossible situations. Forgive us for clutching too tightly what has always been yours in the first place. Pardon us for this and all our sins. God, we do come to you today as, as your people, knowing that, that, uh, that even when we forget that we came from you, that you created us, you formed us, you breathed in us, and when we breathe out, we are called to give out the love that you gave to us, to give out the life that you put in us. That sometimes, God, our sin is that we... We, we remain uh, breathing in, and we forget that the cycle of giving and receiving is healing. So heal us, God. Help us to see all those around us who, who need you and who need our love. Make their needs apparent to us so that we can be givers Help us to find ways to give today in, in, in manners that we have never given before, in forms that we have never reached out before, in new ideas that we have never had before. God, we, we pray for those in our church who are grieving today and those who are lonely and those who are, are fighting illnesses and those who are missing their families. We ask, God, that your presence would be very near to, to them so that they could know that with you all things are possible and with you there is enough strength and courage to make it through. And dear God, we do pray for our world today, for the places where there are fires and storms, where countries are war-torn, where 
communities need to be rebuilt. God, help us to be avenues in those places too. Thank you for connecting us and for teaching us that how we give is the same as how we receive. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I was thinking this week about um, how we last week gave to UMCOR for the, the relief in Haiti, and then we also will be making that possibility available to you for the relief in Louisiana. And I thought about the things that were happening in the world. My brother in California had to leave his home for, he's on like week two and a half now because of one of the fires in California. And not sure if his house will be there when he returns, but knows that his life is, is, is uh, present. And uh, I have a niece who had to leave Louisiana, and she is safe. And, you know, we all have these touchstones of people that have, are going through different things. And one of the great things about the United Methodist Church is that we are a connected church. In other words, we have churches all around the world, and when we give to UMCOR or when we give to churches across, across the world, we are finding ways to reach out and be God's hands and, God of, and feet of mercy and grace during these times. So in some ways, spirituality is like very ethereal, but in other ways, it's very tangible. So today, I invite you to give a tangible gift in the gift of your resources as the ushers will come down to uh, receive those gifts. Those of you online or if you'd like to give electronically here in the room, just pull out your phone and give online. Thank you for your gift.
God received these gifts. They were yours before they were ever ours. And use them to heal and care for our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading today is from the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs is just that, a book, a list of Proverbs. So as you listen to this scripture, it is going to sound a lot like a bunch of one-liners. But I think it is in there that I invite you to listen to the word of God. From this, the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verses 17 through 31. When you're kind to others, you help yourself. When you're cruel to others, you hurt yourself. Bad work gets paid with a bad check. Good work gets solid pay. Take your stand with God's loyal community and live, or chase after phantoms of evil and die. God can't stand deceivers, but oh, how he relishes integrity. Count on this. The wicked won't get off scot-free, and God's loyal people will triumph. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful face on an empty head. The desires of good people lead straight to the best, but wicked ambition ends in angry frustration. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Curses on those who drive a hard bargain. Blessings on all who play fair and square. The one who seeks good finds delight. The student of evil becomes evil. A life devoted to things is a dead life, a stump. A God-shaped life is a flowing tree. Exploit or abuse your family and end up with a fistful of air Common sense tells you it's a stupid way to live. A good life is a fruit-bearing tree. A violent life destroys souls. If good people barely make it, what's in store for the bad? God's word for God's people. Thanks, Susan. If you didn't hear before, my name is Lauren Kaufman. I'm one of the pastors here at PVUMC, and this is a funny scripture, I know, but we'll get there, I promise. Um, But first, I'm going to start by telling you that my daughter, who is almost four, just started preschool, right? And at the beginning of a school year, it feels, it's like a new start, right? It's it's new, it's exciting, it's terrifying. We've had some good days and some bad days. It's just how it goes. And so we thought as this new year starts, we would do a sermon series to help us think in a forward way for the next year. How can we shift our life? How can we make this year the best year ever? So that's the sermon series we're in right now. We are in a sermon series called Best Year Ever. It's a series that hopes to help People find the deep, fulfilling joy of living life like Jesus and discovering the life that God intends for each one of us. Here at PVUMC, we believe that God wants us to live in God's light. We believe that God always has a place for us. We believe that God wants the best for us even when it's hard to imagine that. It is true. God wants the best for us. 
And so throughout this series, for the past three weeks, we have talked about ways that we can come closer to God, that we can experience the life that God has always intended for us. For the last three weeks, we've talked about going deeper with God, taking rest with God, and getting healthy for God. And today, in our final week of our sermon series, Best Year Ever, we will talk about how when we give often, we are living the life that God intended for us. And truly, the three I said before that, they kind of fall flat if we're not sharing it with others. And when we grow in these four areas, we lay a path forward for us to demonstrate the love of God to others in the world. And so that's what we're doing in this series. We're talking about ways we can grow closer to God to get to that life that God always intended for us. And so Proverbs, why Proverbs? Proverbs is weird, is it not? It's a little weird. So for our young people, as Susan alluded to, Proverbs are just like a wise saying. We all know them. They're in our culture today. We, we know quite a few, like a leopard never changes its spots, or my hands are tied, or uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. They're, they're kind of silly, but their the idea is to give us quick one-liners of wisdom to help us grasp to that wis wisdom. And so that's what this book is doing. It's like God wisdom, actually, and it actually starts the book of Proverbs— it starts in the very first chapter, chapter 7. It reads, start with God. The first step in learning is bowing down to God. Only fools thumb their noses at such wisdom and learning. So Proverbs can be a way for us to have wisdom in God. And actually, did you know there's 31 of them? So you could read one a day, mostly, every month except for the days that have 30 days, or the months that have 30 days, obviously. But you could read one a day, and you would have this godly wisdom, and you would, you would feel like some of that wisdom really led you, and then other lines, you would probably laugh. I all heard you laugh at the pig snout line, right? There's some weird language in there. But the idea being that we draw near to the wisdom of God, and Proverbs allows us to do that. The text today that was chosen, it tells us actually how we can live a God-shaped life. And while it can seem like a bunch of one-liners, I'm going to actually group them into a few categories for us. This God-shaped life, it helps us know, let me rephrase that, when we have a God-shaped life, it's when we act in kindness, when we have integrity, and when we show generosity. And so when we do these three things, we end up with a life that's like a flourishing tree. It is not dead. It is a God-shaped life. The first way to a God-shaped life, per this proverb, is kindness. And I have some slides here, so we can, we can go along with my theme here. You can follow. So this is verses 17 through 19. When you're kind to others, you help yourself. When you're cruel to others, you hurt yourself. Bad work gets paid with a bad check. Good work gets solid pay. Take your stand with God's loyal community and live or chase after phantoms of evil and die. It's pretty simple. We should be kind to each other. We should lead with kindness. We should be kind to our world. We should be kind to ourselves. We should be kind to everyone and everything. Kindness shows the love of God. You might remember, if you were here a few weeks ago, we had these giant water slides out here. Some of you weren't here for that. If, so imagine with me, so we had one slide that was for the little kids, which was about one story tall. And then we had one for the bigger kids, which was truly two stories tall. My twin boys, who are two, they're like this big. If you can see that. They're little. And they saw those slides. They wanted to go. They so wanted to go. 
but they couldn't climb up the ladder themselves because they were too little. They would get halfway up and then they would slide down. And then they'd come. They're very tenacious, I'll give them that. Well, I couldn't go in the slide because I had another service to go to. I couldn't show up to our modern worship service soaking wet. I did go on the slide after that service, though. True story. It was very fun. But in the meantime, before I could get on the slide, a, one of our junior high girls, Elise, she was walking by. She was on a mission to get food. I knew it. I could see it in her eyes. She wanted a hot dog. I don't blame her. I also love hot dogs. But I, I stopped her, and I said, hey, Elise, could you do me a favor? Could you take my boys up the slide? They keep falling. And I could see her in her head. She was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and she did it. And not only did she help them up the slide multiple times, when she was done eating her hot dog in a little bit, she took them on the two-story slide over and over and over and over. I mean, it just didn't end. And she was so kind to them. She showed them a welcoming spirit, a kindness that they maybe wouldn't have seen elsewhere. I was so proud of Elise because she took time out of her day. She stopped from getting food. That's hard for a growing girl. But she did it, and she did it out of the kindness of her heart. And it made my boys' day. They will always know they are loved here at this church because of Elise. What a great example of God's love through kindness. This week, I'm going to challenge you a few times, so get ready. So maybe pull out a piece of paper or your phone. If you're at home, you can write it in the chat. Do whatever you need to do. Who are you going to be kind to this week? Write it down. Keep yourself accountable. None of you are moving. Let's go. Come on. Write it down. Let's go. Who are you going to be kind to? The reason we write it down is because once we write it down on our paper, we type it in our phone or whatever it is, it solidifies it in our head. It helps us imagine who we are going to be kind to. Be purposeful in our kindness. It leads us to a God-shaped life. The next section of our proverb is about integrity. It reads, God can't stand deceivers, but how he relishes integrity. Count on this. The wicked won't get off scot-free, and God's loyal people will triumph. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful face on an empty head. It's a good one. The desires of good people lead straight to the best, but wicked ambition ends in angry frustration. This section is about having integrity. For our younger people here who may not know what that means, it means knowing what is right and then doing it. As people of God, we know what is right and we have the courage to do it. That is integrity. And real quick about the pig line, because I know you're curious. I'm sure you are. It basically means that wisdom about what is right is the most important right? Don't fall for the fake beauty. Wisdom comes before beauty. Wisdom's more important than beauty. Beauty without wisdom is nothing. It's basically a ring on a pig's face. Wisdom matters the most. So that's what that means. <laughs> and so as God's people, we get to know what's right, and we get to know how we can act in that right way. We have the strength of God to do that. We have the courage from God to do what is right. Integrity can range from a, on all levels, right? You could have something as simple as, let's say, I need $10. I really need $10. And I see someone drop $10 in front of me. Integrity would be me picking up that $10 and not putting it in my pocket, even though I need it. I would give it back to the person who dropped it. To an extreme level that we're seeing even this week, hundreds of people and volunteers around the world have gathered together to use their resources, their time, their courage, 
to extract people from Kabul, Afghanistan. That is not an easy feat. There are thousands and thousands of people who could not get out in time, who fell through the cracks, and they're going into this very dangerous country on their own time, on their own dime, and they are helping bring people home. That is integrity. About doing what is right, even when it's hard. That's what we are called to do as God's people, is to act in integrity. Integrity is a marker of a God-shaped life. And the last marker of a God-shaped life, according to this proverb, is generosity. In verses 24 through 27, you read, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Curses on those who drive a hard bargain. Blessings on all who play fair and square. The one who seeks good finds delight. The student of evil becomes evil. And it's as simple as this. When we show generosity, we're showing the love of God. And generosity isn't just constricted to our money. Generosity means so much more. It means giving of our spirit, of giving of our kindness, of giving of our time, giving of our positive attitude, giving the love of Christ in our actions. And so in the month of September, here's my second challenge. For all of you who didn't play my, the first time, here's your chance. Write it down. In the month of September... Think about what you are going to give to someone. And it can't just be something simple, like, oh, I guess I'll just, you know, give my leftovers to somebody. Like, that's nice and all. But, like, gen the generosity that's being spoken about here is extreme generosity. It's about giving of, to somebody your best in the name of God. It's about giving your best, not to the things that are discarded or not as important to you anymore, but giving your best. It's extravagant generosity, and it is a marker of a God-shaped life. So think about, for this month, who you are going to be generous to. What are you going to give to somebody? And when we do these things, when we follow these markers of a God-shaped life, kindness, integrity, generosity, the scripture says we will have a flourishing life. Not a tree stump that is dead, but a flourishing tree that blooms. It blooms the fruit of Christ. We, as God's people, are able to demonstrate that kindness, integrity, and generosity when we are devoted to God. When we devote ourselves, we flourish and we bear the fruit of Christ. And so when we allow ourselves to be molded into that God-shaped life, we are able to give so much more. We lead with that generous spirit that we learn from Christ. We lead with kindness, we lead with integrity, we demonstrate God's love. And when we give more, we see God more. When we have deeper relationships with God and with other people, we see God more. When we rest in God, we see God more. When we get healthy in the name of God, when we seek health in the name of God, we will see God more. And when we see God more, then we know we will have the best year ever. Scratch that. We will have the best life ever. Let's pray. God, we admit that we hold back in our kindness. We hold back in integrity and generosity. 
we shy away from having a God-shaped life. We are fearful to give our best. We are afraid to let go. God, would you heal that in us? Would we seek to be in relationship with you? Would we seek to rest in you? Would we seek to have health in you and to give through you so that we can show your great love for each and every person on this planet? And we lift all of this up to you, and we follow you with humility and praise. Amen. And now as we enter into this moment of Holy Communion, the words will be on the screen as we go through our liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right, do we thank? Thanks. Oh God, we remember that you are holy and full of grace, that you are powerful and you bring praises to our lips. And we are grateful for all that you have done for us. And today, as a people of Christ, we remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave it to you and he gave thanks to it to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup from the table and he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in unity with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who are gathered here in this room and in the rooms across our, our world. And pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we can be for your world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with your Holy Spirit and in your Holy Church, for all honor, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of being a community of Christ, would you pray the prayer that the disciples were taught by Jesus? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lorna and I will come down and pass out uh, the cups to you. You can come forward, receive the cup, and then at the same time, we will open the cups together. So, um, so hold them until we instruct you to open them together.
And if you would pop off the first layer. Take the body of Christ given for you. It's okay to break it if you'd like. And now the second layer. The cup of forgiveness given for you. God, thank you for all that you have done for us. In this day and in the breaking of the bread and the giving of the cup, remake us and renew us and reform us in ways that bring us closer to you. Amen. Just a few, just a couple announcements. Before we head out, next week our modern Ignite service is going to move their time from 11 to 9. So you're going to see some more people on campus. You'll see some people going to the chapel and some people coming here. That's what's happening. Here's the good news. Nothing changes for you. You just might have to find a parking spot faster. I don't know. Also, if you are new or feel new, we welcome you to our first look today, immediately after the service. What this is, is just a quick get to know us. We tell you a little bit about our history. We tell you about what we stand for, and we'll give you a tour of our campus as well. If you're interested, just head into the narthex, and Katie's back there with her green mask on and her pink purse over her shoulder. And so you can't miss her. Join us for first look right after the service. And now I'll invite you to stand as we receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face turn towards you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Stop.